Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and the Australian tropics are certainly heating up, that's for sure. We've got a tropical cyclone on the cards for Western Australia and a tropical low that's expected to impact the Cape York Peninsula and another tropical low expected to form in the Gulf of Carpentaria all in the next 10 days. We're going to start focusing on the Queensland situation because it does affect more people first. We're expecting a tropical low to move through the Cape York Peninsula and then down into the Gulf of Carpentaria as well um, and that will likely cause some very significant rainfall totals anywhere north of Townsville on the Cape York Peninsula over the next 10 days and then we're going to go over west and take a look at a developing tropical cyclone for Western Australia. So starting things off now with the satellite imagery you can see there's a lot of thunderstorm activity already starting to fire across the Northern Territory in the Kimberley region of WA2. Um, it's been pretty consistent over the past couple of days this thunderstorm activity and it's dumping some pretty heavy rainfall as well. Over the next 24 hours we can be expecting some rainfall accumulations up to 25 to 50 millimeters but in the big news really for this update considering that the Northern Territory does need this rainfall they're not in a flooding situation right now um, up to 100 millimeters could cause some flooding but still nothing too crazy over there it's the Queensland one that again we will be focusing on thankfully no more rainfall expected around the Cairns to end up down towards Innisfail or Tully area expected throughout the rest of today maybe up to 15 or 20 millimeters but certainly not 50 to 100 millimeters which would just exacerbate the flooding situation that they've got over there right now the rainfall certainly starting to ease off at least over the next 24 hours and it's a similar story over the next three days and in fact the next five days as well hardly any rainfall compared to what they have been seeing around the Cairns down to the Innisfail, Lucinda, Tully and even up towards the Daintree rainforest as well the entirety of the Daintree and the Cassowary coastline only maybe up towards 25 or 50 millimeters in the absolute wettest of spots over the next five days but that picture changes in the five to ten day forecast period with up to 800 millimeters expected uh, in around Innisfail. Uh, so 800 millimetres over five days. Again, going to move into a very wet period. Typical for March, considering it is the wettest month of the year up here, but still a lot of rainfall is expected. Now, you would notice that rainfall accumulations are very high across the Northern Territory and also Western Australia. Now, that's because there is a developing tropical cyclone up here. It could become a tropical cyclone. Forecast models not totally on board with it being a tropical cyclone yet. And there's actually just a little bit more uncertainty than what we were looking at yesterday. Today. so it's a difficult forecast to be making. There's two areas that I want you to be watching. The first area is going to be here around Nullanby or Cape Wessel on the Northern Territory side of things and then over here on the Cape York side of things you can see uh, especially if I switch it over winds we've got this southeasterly uh, winds down in the Coral Sea and then these northwesterly winds up around Papua New Guinea and then you can see the pretty well, very similar pattern easterly is contradictory to the westerlies up on the northern side of the system over north of the Northern Territory. Now if you play this through the winds do kind of wrap themselves up very briefly uh, here in a little spin-off by around Wednesday or Thursday. This is probably just a very concentrated monsoon trough here that would have a lot of rainfall around it, uh, but it's going to be uh, closer to Darwin where we see the actual tropical cyclone genesis. I would give this system maybe a 5% chance of forming into a tropical low here and if it did it'd be very brief indeed but still watch the Cape York Peninsula and the um, Coral Sea because there is a chance that a, a very brief and small tropical cyclone does attempt to spin itself up. Normally by now we'd have a lot of precursor convection and thunderstorm activity to that system and as you can see we really don't right now. We don't have consistent strong thunderstorms around where this storm would be uh, forming which would be here right now uh, so I guess there's still some but again it's not really a concern at this point I don't think that we're going to see a tropical cyclone out of that it is still once again going to be the uh, Gulf of Carpentary system that we have to be watching however if you did look at the Axis G3 model which is the cyclone former it's the model that promotes cyclone activity they do still call for this tropical cyclone to develop normally an unreliable model the Axis G3 here but it might be onto something again we'll just have to wait and see it's going to be this system over here that that's going to have our attention at least and this system don't be fooled even though it's over the northern territory it's going to have a big impact on what conditions are uh, happening over in Queensland and I promise also we'll get over to the West Australian system as well because we're moving into a pretty active period in terms of rainfall uh, from these tropical lows across the northern reaches of Australia.
So the Northern Territory system first. This is Tropical Low 09U. Now, Tropical Low 09U will likely to, uh, to develop late this week into early uh, next weekend, and it's going to develop either in the Gulf of Carpentaria or over the Cape York Peninsula. It might briefly get itself into the Coral Sea, but I'm not really expecting that to be a likelihood at this point. The closer it is to the Cape York Peninsula, the heavier the rainfall will be north of Townsville, and you can see by Saturday evening, a lot of onshore flow already starting to come ashore, and this is going to drive rain full accumulations up through Saturday where we can be seeing up to 50 millimeters around the Cairns area. Sunday as well maybe 50 to 100 millimeters especially north of Cairns up to 100 or 150 millimeters and then next week it looks like it's going to be Monday, Tuesday and maybe even Wednesday as well where we're looking at 50 to 150 millimeters and maybe even pockets up towards 250 millimeters as this tropical low tracks over the Cape York Peninsula and it will really drive those rainfall accumulations through the roof that's for sure. And if we look at 10 day rainfall accumulations widespread above two to 300 millimeters and then on the cassowary coast the daintree coast as well you're looking at 800 millimeters as being the um, absolute maximum here which is very concerning indeed. Belen and Co, which is just through here, 800 millimetres, typically the wettest place out of all of these locations here. It almost routinely is. So we could be seeing maybe a metre of rainfall fall here. Certainly a very outlandish prediction from the Eastern Blue Bear forecast model, but considering it's generally a pretty reliable model in terms of tropical low and cyclone track, it's a model that I'm going to be talking about quite a lot. Now, keep in mind that this could completely disappear in tomorrow's upload as well. So um, again, considering it is five to 10 days out, there's still a high degree of certainty surrounding it but just know that because there is a tropical low expected to move through the Cape York Peninsula and also the Gulf of Carpentaria that this is a big likelihood right now and the Axis G3 model even though it doesn't call for 50 to 100 millimeters per se or even 50 to 100 millimeters around the Cairns area they're calling for 10 times drier conditions there compared to the East Middle model they're calling for very similar rainfall accumulations on the uh, Northern Territory, Queensland border, or that sort of area, and on the western side of the Cape York Peninsula. So it really does depend on where this tropical low does track and how much moisture it pulls from the Coral Sea. If it tracks closer to the Northern Territory, it won't pull as much and we'll likely see decreased rainfall around Cairns. I'll be able to give you an exact number by around this coming Thursday or Friday. So again, not too much warning on this, but considering it's a tropical low, that's actually pretty good warning. Normally the forecast models here this year have at least taken up towards 24 hours before before the situation to decide. So I'm thinking 72 hours is pretty good warning considering the situation and the circumstances right now. So again, a little bit of uncertainty, which is making the forecast quite difficult. Now, the Eastern Relief model is trending um, upwards in terms of the tropical low rainfall as well across the Northern Territory. We'll just finish off by taking a look at that around Darwin up to 300 millimetres and then other parts of the Northern Territory um, border up towards the like, Arafura Sea. You're looking up towards 400 millimetres. Nullan by itself, maybe 200 millimetres and then Cape Wessel, 350 millimetres. So significant amounts of rainfall there and also down on the Queensland coastline, that onshore flow that we're going to be seeing over the next 24 to 48 hours. I would say that's going to bring quite significant rainfall as well around the Lakai and Rockhampton area compared to what they have been seeing this year. We could be seeing up to 100 millimetres for, for some locations down towards Bundaberg on the coastline, but the widespread totals will be around 25 to 30 millimetres. Nothing too crazy, but certainly some welcome rainfall there. Now, I'm sure quite a few of you, especially one of people that are looking at the forecast models outside of this uh, video, uh, are seeing this rainfall swipe that's now getting very close to the West Australian coastline. Now that's from Tropical Low 08U, which we're going to talk about right now. You can see located around West Island, the Cocos Keeling Islands right now. It's very heavily wind sheared it is. It's struggling on that front, but if we were to take a look at the uh, look of the system for the past 12 hours, you can see it's been firing up some consistent convection, some very heavy convection, i.e. thunderstorm activity, over the past 12 hours. And it is looking like it's trying to become a fully blown, a fully fledged tropical cyclone, likely going to pick up the name of Cyclone Megan, which is the next name on the Australian naming list, and you bet there'll be individual updates on this system if it does form, because it is going to be a West Australian cyclone threat. Well, it looks like windy.com is really struggling here, the amount of data that I'm loading in. So we're going to take a look at wind speeds here. I should actually also touch on wind speeds up over the Cape York Peninsula, because wind speeds, although they will be something of a threat, they're not going to be crazy. We'll just briefly touch on these, and I do apologise for this video being very disorganised. It is still 
until early in the morning. Um, you can see peak wind gusts up to 90 or 100 kilometers an hour for the Cape York Peninsula um, and also parts of the Arafura Sea as well. And then maybe up towards 110 kilometers an hour for parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria. So certainly going to be quite a rough weekend and early next week as this tropical low makes passage, but nothing crazy in terms of huge wind gusts. 100 kilometers an hour does seem like it's going to be the roof here. Uh, so yeah, we'll keep touching base on that over the coming couple of days as we make these videos. But it's certainly going to be this Australian system that has my eye. It doesn't look like it properly gets itself going until maybe Thursday or Friday as it gets really close to the West Australian coastline. I don't think it will get named as a tropical cyclone until Friday unless it pulls some kind of miracle um, in the wind shear that it's in right now. But it gets really close to the WA coastline as it wraps itself up, almost making a landfall on Exmouth and delivering wind gusts of around 125 kilometres an hour, or actually a bit stronger than that, 140 kilometres an hour to the coastal city of Exmouth. Uh, before moving down the West Australian coastline and it'd be great if it could make its way down towards Perth and deliver some welcome rainfall there. Now we'll contradict that to the um, Access G3 model. They're still calling for it to track close to the West Australian coastline. It's not a huge track discrepancy and they've got it pretty similar in terms of wind intensity as well. They just don't have it going as close which means that the forecast is still relatively uncertain and again with this Gulf of Carpentaria system as well they've got it uh, not even entering the Gulf of Carpentaria just moving through the Northern Territory and into Western Australia. And we've seen this track time and time again on the forecast this uh, cyclone season, moving into the Kimberley region of Western Australia, where it will dump a significant amount of rainfall there. We'll be watching that one very closely as well. And more details on that system will probably be out around next Thursday or Friday. Anyways, on that note, as my voice decides to fry itself, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure having your company this Monday morning. I hope you have a great day at work. I'm um, going back to work for people, long weekend for some people I think in Victoria as well so great to uh, be down there um, thank you so much to the channel sponsors their names on screen right now much appreciated the support on the channel has been great uh, over the past couple of days and I do thank everyone that's been watching subscribing sharing and leaving a like on the videos and also click the join button down below because it really does help out so thank you so much for the recent support it does mean a lot that's all for this video and I'll catch you all in the next film goodbye